What's up guys, I'm Ira Rochelle and this is Nuggets of Truth. In the church, we have the saying, what the devil meant for evil, God turned for our good. While this is a super great uplifting saying, which I actually use myself, it's, it's not actually anywhere in the Bible. The saying though is rooted in biblical truth. The saying comes, I believe, from at least two main verses. The first verse is Genesis chapter 50 verse 20. And this is Joseph speaking. He says, As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. This is Joseph speaking to his brothers after they apologized to him and feared that he might kill them for selling him into slavery. Now the other verse is Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It says, And we know that for those who love God, All things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. These two verses say the same thing. God works all things for good when you follow him. That doesn't mean that bad things won't happen in the process. Joseph was sold into slavery and thrown into jail for something he didn't do before everything was worked for good. Paul, who wrote this verse, Romans 8, 28, he also wrote 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24 through 27, which says, Five times I, I received at the hands of the Jews the forty lashes less than one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea, on frequent journeys in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from the Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardship, through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food and cold and exposure. Paul, who wrote that God works all things together for good, for those who who love him are and are called according to his purpose. He also wrote that he was beaten and he was lashed and he was shipwrecked and he was stoned, that he was in danger from robbers and his own people and from Gentiles. He went through so many things. He was jailed. Yet he still believed that God works all things together for good. Peter also has the same sentiment. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. It says, Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Peter describes Satan as a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. For more on why Satan is described as a roaring lion, check out our video, Four Beasts of Daniel 7, the first beast, part 2, which is under our The End Times category. Now, not only does Peter describe Satan as a roaring lion, but look at what the psalmist writes. Psalms chapter 91, verse 13. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. The psalmist compares lions and serpents to evil spirits. And at a first glance, This verse doesn't seem to be very convincing, but let's take a closer look. The first interesting thing is that that word translated here as lion is actually the Hebrew word sahal. The reason I brought this up is because this word is better translated as lion kind. What's symbolic about that? Well, this word sahal is only found seven times in the entire Old Testament. In fact, Each time it's used, it's actually used in a spiritual way. And maybe we'll get into that more in another video. But for now, the second interesting thing about this verse are the two verses before it. Verses 11 and verse 12. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways on their hands. They will bear you up lest you strike your foot against a stone. Sound familiar? Well, it should. Because these are the same two verses that Satan tempted Jesus with in Matthew chapter 4, verse 6. The fact that Satan tempts Jesus with these two verses is extremely interesting, at least to me, especially because of the verse that comes directly after it, saying that you will tread on the lion and trample the serpent. Another reason is because of Satan's curse in the Garden of Eden, which we go into greater detail in our video, What Was the Serpent's Curse in the Garden, which is under our Too Deep category.
Anyways, let's read that verse, shall we? Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Satan, the ancient serpent in the garden, was told the prophecy that Jesus would bruise or crush his head. I found that to be extremely interesting. The fact that the very verse Satan used to tempt Jesus prophesied Jesus overcoming him as if it was a reminder by God himself that, hey, let me just remind you of the prophecy I told you long, long ago. So at this point in time, you might be thinking, uh, what, what, you, what are you trying to say? Well, here's what I'm trying to say. There may not be any verse in the Bible that directly says what the devil meant for evil, God turns for our good. There is definitely evidence for this statement. And the good may not always be in a physical way on this earth. Sometimes it's not until we get to eternity that we actually get to enjoy the good. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, What no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor the heart of man imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Here's another verse of encouragement. James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Sometimes our lives seem to be filled with mostly pain and sorrow, but when we look to God and we hold fast to his promises, we find his love, his joy, and his peace. This is why Paul, after everything he endured, could say this in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 through 10. So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This isn't the only time Paul says this. Take a look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So just to sum everything up for you guys, while there may not be any verse in the Bible that directly says what the devil meant for evil, God turns for our good. There is definitely evidence for this statement and the good may not always be in a physical way on this earth. Sometimes it's not until we get to eternity that we get to actually enjoy the good that God has for us. Things aren't always going to be easy. Things aren't always going to be good, but God is always good and he is always in control. Therefore, he will always work all things for good. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.